As clinicians, it's never easy breaking difficult news to a veteran. Fear of causing discomfort to a veteran or family member can prevent us from dealing with issues with complete honesty. Also, many providers may not have been taught how to have these delicate talks. But there are ways to deliver difficult news with compassion, as we will demonstrate in this training video. We recommend using an empathic and well thought out approach that follows the steps outlined in the acronym SPIKES. It stands for setting, perception, invitation, knowledge, empathy, and strategy. Research has shown that providers feel more confident and patients feel more supported during difficult conversations when using the SPIKES approach. In this program, you will watch a physician use the SPIKES protocol when delivering the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease to a veteran. After watching this video, you will be able to describe the SPIKES protocol and apply it to your practice. Make sure you also view our other video that applies SPIKES to an end-of-life discussion. By using SPIKES, we can communicate better and provide compassionate care to veterans. Come on, Vanessa, we're gonna be late. Chris Gilmore is a 67-year-old veteran who recently completed a comprehensive assessment for dementia. Why are you doing this now? Who cares about your lipstick? Chris, can you slow down, please? We have plenty of time. You don't want the doctor to see you upset. The initial evaluation had been prompted by his wife, Vanessa's concern about her husband's memory loss and behavioral changes. As the owner of a restaurant, Mr. Gilmore has begun losing receipts and forgetting to pay the bills. Also, he has been rude and irritable with customers, which is not like him. Today, they are returning to the VA to review the findings of the comprehensive assessment with his doctor. Look, I just want it to be over with. See if the doc can change my meds or something. I know you're worried. I am too. But let's just go in more calmly. See what he said. Michael Chen, the veteran's primary care physician, has worked with Mr. Gilmore for a number of years and realizes a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease will be difficult to hear. So he sets the stage for this difficult encounter. Before meeting with the veteran, Dr. Chen prepares the setting, the first step of the spike strategy. In preparation of the meeting, it is important to review the veteran's medical history and facts about the diagnosis prior to the visit. Make sure to use a private, comfortable, and quiet location with enough seating for everyone present. Set aside an adequate amount of time for discussion and minimize distractions like turning off your cell phone and pager, or give them to someone during the conversation. Before the meeting, make sure to ask whom the veteran would like to have present during the discussion. Remember to remain calm and attentive. Dr. Chen, the Gilmores are here to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, Mr. and Mrs. Gilmore. How are you? Oh, uh, well, kind of worried. Yeah, we're okay. Just anxious to know the test results. Yes, of course. Please have a seat while I close the door. Now we are moving to the perception stage of the spikes process, meaning, before you tell, ask what the veteran knows or expects. I'm glad you're both here. Tell me, how have things been going since we last met? Okay, I guess, um, well, maybe you should ask Vanessa. Mrs. Gilmore? Not so good. I know Chris is embarrassed, but he keeps asking the same questions over and over. And he's still losing stuff, and he forgets words all the time. <laughs> Boy, it doesn't take much to set him off. You should have seen him on the way over here. I guess we're just hoping to understand what's causing it and what we can do about it. 
I can't imagine how difficult these changes must be for you and your family. That's why we did a complete evaluation to understand what's causing these symptoms. So how did the testing go? It was fine. Yeah, but we still don't have the results. Before you break the difficult news, assess how much information a person may want to receive. Not everyone will want to know all the details. So this is the invitation stage. I have all the testing results. Would you like me to first explain the results before I tell you what I think the diagnosis might be? Of course. Mr. Gilmore? Uh, I don't know. Sure, tell us. Now the veteran has accepted the invitation. Move to the knowledge stage where the information is explained. Your blood work did not have any findings that were new or of concern. Your head CAT scan showed that there were changes in the volume of the brain matter, meaning fewer brain cells are communicating. And unfortunately, the neuropsychological testing also brought up concerns. Huh? Wait. Yeah. What, what, what does that mean? Let me summarize. Here's what the neuropsychologist found during testing. Your long-term memory is good. However, she found that you had trouble with short-term memory, remembering words, and difficulty with complex tasks such as managing money. Oh, that, um, that sounds bad. I wish I had better news, Mr. and Mrs. Gilmore, but unfortunately, when we take the results of all the testing together, they suggest a diagnosis of early stage Alzheimer's disease. That's the most common form of dementia. What? Alzheimer's? At my age? How, how, how can that be? Are you, are you sure that, I mean, could it be something else? Maybe the medicine he's on? Well, we looked through his medications and did blood work and imaging to make sure we weren't missing anything else causing your symptoms. Uh, given the neuropsychological testing findings and the absence of any medical findings that could better explain your problems, Alzheimer's disease is the most likely diagnosis. The diagnosis is conveyed simply and directly, with compassion, without medical jargon. It's best to talk in the same language as the veteran. Information is conveyed in small amounts to allow the veteran time to process. After reporting the difficult news, show empathy, the next stage of the Spikes Protocol. You know, my mom had this. I was afraid of getting this. I know this is scary, but I'm glad that you came in and gave us a chance to work these things out together. The earlier we know about dementia, the more time we have to plan ahead. So there's medicine to cure him? No, unfortunately, there is no cure for Alzheimer's at the moment. There are some medications that can help slow down how quickly the illness progresses. The purpose of the medication is to help preserve as much of Mr. Gilmore's memory for as long as we can. I, I can't believe this. Alzheimer's? So what do we do? Should Chris start the medicine now? This question leads into planning a strategy, which is the last phase of spikes. This is where you make sure the veteran understands the diagnosis and you collaborate on a plan for the next steps. More questions may come, so provide resources and education. Assure the veteran and spouse that the treatment team is available to help. I think it's a good idea to give the medicine a try, uh, and we can talk more about the risks and benefits. Is this okay with you, Mr. Gilmore? Sure. Let's go for it. After explaining the treatment and sharing more information about Alzheimer's, Dr. Chen plans a follow-up visit. Please make sure to schedule a follow-up visit with me. I think you would both benefit from learning more about Alzheimer's, and it would be helpful for you to set up an appointment with our social worker. And here's a brochure that has information for you and your family. And in the meantime, please remember that your nurse and I are available for any concerns and questions that you may have. Here's some information about how you can contact the clinic or any of us. Okay, thanks. Take a look when you have time and please write down any questions.
That way, our social worker and I can answer as many of your questions as possible on your next appointment. Okay. But you know, right now, everything's just a blur. Sure. I know this is a lot to take in. Although a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease is never easy to give, studies show how you disclose difficult news can affect the veteran's satisfaction and how well they adjust to the news. Let's review once more the steps of the SPIKES protocol. First, make sure of the setting. Familiarize yourself with the veteran's medical chart and involve significant others. Also, make sure that you're totally available. Turn off cell phones and have others take charge of pagers. Find a quiet, comfortable private area where you could sit down. Being seated is much more calming. Remember to be attentive and tune in to really listen. Silence and repetition can let the veteran know you are listening and that you care. Perception is step two. Remember the before you tell, ask principle. Questions help to clarify what the veteran already knows about their condition, like, what have you been told? Or, are you worried that this might be serious? Then it's time for the invitation. For example, how much information would you like to know about your diagnosis? Although most veterans want to know all the details, some do not. Gaining permission builds trust. The fourth step is knowledge. Before delivering the news, prepare the veteran that difficult news will be conveyed, saying, unfortunately, or I'm sorry, can soften the blow. Remember to use a veteran's language, avoid medical jargon, and give information in small amounts. Then, show empathy. That's the next stage. Combining empathy with information shows that you understand the human side of the medical news, and details may be better understood by the veteran and their loved ones. The last step is strategy. Confirm that the veteran understands the information and provide the next steps for treatment. This helps the veteran and family follow through with recommendations. With compassion, show veterans and family that you care and are knowledgeable about the diagnosis and best ways to manage treatment. To help reinforce the SPIKES approach, please watch our second video on using SPIKES for an end-of-life discussion.